I'm watching this fitness instructor. She shares one fourth and final principle, and it's about this concept of peaks and valleys. She said we need to enter a process of eating more meals more frequently, just lower amounts of food. Most of us eat three meals a day, but we go into what's called a peak hunger state. You haven't eaten, you're so hungry, and then when we do eat, we overeat, and it's like, I shouldn't have eaten that much. It stretches our stomach, we actually enter that overeating process again, and it's these peaks and valleys. She said if we eat five small meals a day, it starts to normalize our caloric intake because you never have this extreme hunger. It actually reduces it. Well, you know, in business, I know you know this, we experience peaks and valleys all the time. Revenue's up, business feels great, the next day all that money's gone, business feels like crap, up and down. We're, we're manic like that, you know, bipolar is what we are, these are our, our entrepreneurs, because you know, one day is the best day of our lives because a big deposit came in, the next day we want to kill ourselves. It's like, oh my God. Our income uh, can, though, can be normalized following a process we call the 1025 rule. And uh, today's the 13th, so this is the days of the month, the next trigger would be the 25th. And then the 10th, so let's draw a little chart here, 25th, 10th, 25th, 10th. And this pattern just repeats on forever. This is the income account, the serving tray of cash. And what happens is money will come in today, the 13th. Hopefully you get a deposit today in your business. But the income account is the serving tray. The money comes in there. It just sits there. We never touch it. It just sits there. Well, no, I shouldn't say we don't. We just don't touch it today. We wait for the trigger today, 25th. Tomorrow, maybe some more money comes in. The day after, some more money comes in. Maybe nothing. On the 25th, all the money, all the money in the income account gets allocated out based upon the percentages. Income account goes to zero. Money goes to profit. We hide it away at the second bank so we can't see it. Money goes to the owner's compensation so we ensure that the best employee is rewarded. Money goes to the tax account, hidden away so we can pay our taxes but we don't borrow from it. And the toothpaste tube gets filled up and that's what you have to operate your business on. Starting on the 25th, money accumulates in, accumulates in. On the 10th, all the money in the income account goes to zero and we act as we allocate out again. And this process repeats over and over and over. And it forms you know, a pattern that could look something like this, something like that. What's gonna happen is by logging into your bank account, and I did the survey, almost all of you raised your hand, some of you said do it hour, hourly, daily. That is the best behavior you can do. Because every time you log in, all I challenge you to do is look at your income account and see how much money's in there on average. On the 10th and 25th, how much money do you expect? I'll just pick a random number, say it's $10,000. So every 10th and 25th, you look in there and say, normally I expect $10,000. But sometimes there'll be less money in there. Other times, There'll be more money. When there's fluctuations outside of what you expect, that is a call to action. Just call your bookkeeper or accountant, talk to a guy like Mark and say, hey, what's happening? Is it the seasonality that's affecting us? Do, are we not doing collections right? You know, what's going on here? Let's do more of this, Mark. This is a call to action. This is the most simplified version of a cash flow management statement. I don't know if you know how to read an accounting cash flow management statement. I sure as heck don't. I question if my accountant knows how to between me and you. They're complex, but this shows the delta, meaning the change in our cash flow, and when it's outside a realm of normal expectation, it's a call to action. Just talk to someone else, investigate it. Try to replicate the good ones, try to fix the bad ones. That's the thing. And um, by the way, the reason we do this on the 10th and 25th of the month is as you allocate money out, the 10th and 25th, your OPEX account will be funded every 10th and 25th. That's when you pay your bills. When you pay bills on the 10th, they usually arrive by the 15th. That's probably when half your bills are due to your vendors. When you repeat this process on the 25th, the bills will arrive by end of month, probably when your other half of bills are due. So it gets you into a normalized payment schedule with your vendors. They, to be, they deserve to be paid on time, just like we do. But more importantly, it lets you show, see the transactions that are going on and how much cash is accumulating or not and take action accordingly. There's so another part of this rhythm, this is my favorite, it's the 90-day rhythm. What I want you to do Every 90 days, the money that's accumulated in your profit account, it's going to come out. I don't recommend 100% of that money. I think we should have a cash reserve for an extreme, unique circumstance and for what's called cash equity. But I would say 50% of the accumulated money that's in there comes out to you as a reward to the shareholder quarterly. And, and why quarterly? You know, I've been studying large companies like Ford and different companies. Not, I don't have an affinity or a love for large corporations. I have a respect for them. I mean, they started in a room just like this, too. They've grown to that size. I just love small business. I love small business. But those big businesses started like us, and the only way to achieve, like, you know, Google has 100,000 employees. 
The only way to achieve that size is through absolute fiscal discipline. You, you have a massive payroll every week. You have to know your numbers. You have to be fiscally disciplined. And the golden rule with every public company is first and foremost, reward the shareholder, right? The investors, the risk takers. So every corporation knows at the end of every 90 days, reward the people that are supporting us through profit distribution. And that's the fiscal discipline lesson from the large corporations we need to embrace. Every 90 days, give a bonus check to the smart men and women who started these businesses, risked their lives to do this, their families and so forth, and their financials to do this. Reward them. And your job with the profit distribution is to celebrate. That's actually the answer to number, oh, the answer number eight is peaks and valleys. Uh, that was the prior thing. But uh, number nine is profit is used to celebrate. Um, if you reinvest or plow back, those are, those are two terms I hear all the time. I, um, and I'll explain in a second, but if you reinvest or plow back the money into your business, you are training yourself to completely disregard profit and are avoiding the call for efficiency, that's the next blank, frugality, and uh, innovation. And by the way, uh, I know I speak quickly and we were going through this pretty fast. If you've missed any of the answers, they're already all on the worksheet at the very bottom. If you didn't notice that, um, that's, that's not a disclaimer. That's not, oh, I thought that was the nonsense center. Yeah, so this guy, is he is a magician and a mind reader. That's a three for one deal. I hear the terms reinvest and plow back all the time and uh, they drive me nuts. I, I met this person just, just yesterday, I was at an event. They came back and said, you know, we proudly had a 22% profit last quarter. I said, it's amazing, what'd you do with it? We plowed it all back into the business. Oh, everything. So I said, how much came out? Nothing. I said, great. So I said, you took a 22% profit, you put it back in the business, what happened when it went in the business? We spent it. Oh, so it was an expense? Exactly. I'm like, okay, so you took money and you spent it as an expense and you no longer have it. That's correct, that's it. And it was a great profit. I'm like, okay, you know what? That's actually no profit whatsoever. We have, it. I'm, I'm just picking that person, but what we have is when we call something profit and then we spend it, it was never a profit. That's a shell game. It's an expense. When the second that money goes out the door, it's an expense. It never was a profit. The only definition of profit is when it gets distributed to the owner. So if you use the terms reinvest or plow back, those are all very soft terms for saying more expenses, more expenses, more expenses. Profit comes out to celebrate. And you define the celebration. It's, you're the shareholder. Maybe it's paying off personal debt. Maybe it's saving for your future. Maybe it's an amazing vacation. Or maybe it's your first profit and it's an amazing time at Starbucks for the eight bucks or whatever you take out. Because that was my first profit distribution. And that was my favorite profit distribution. My 43 quarters back, my first profit distribution was $8 and change. And I'll tell you, it was my favorite because I went right to Starbucks with cold, hard cash. And, and I had to break into singles, you know. Let's break this. I had eight singles. I laid it on the table and said, my company is buying the most expensive drink I can afford for that. A grande vente map lapidou or whatever. And that's what they gave me. And it was the best coffee of my life. And I think you'll, I know you'll experience the same thing. When the profit starts coming out, you will start getting emboldened and empowered and you'll start getting what you deserve. Even if it starts off at $8 and builds up over time. Every 90 days, the money comes out.